Hi, my name is Jeff Lush. Today we're going to talk about using the count if and a date variable to uh, pull up information in our gallery based on a SharePoint list. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's really not that tough. So stay tuned. We're going to walk through this step by step and actually show you an example of, um, of the application that we're using and the reason why we need to use this type of count within our environment. So stay tuned. All right. Um, this book, <laughs> excuse me, I just lost my train of thought. This is uh, part of a series of a book called Elephants Do Not Float in Clouds. You can search for this book. Jeffrey Lush is my name, so you can search for that. It has multiple things in there, not just this one example. And then uh, you can purchase that book, Lulu, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon. And then here are some of the other topics. So we're doing the last one here, which is this one. Okay. Now, each of the sections, by the way, as you can see, have a video associated with them. So you can get a video explanation as well as have this book as a reference. So let's let's jump right to this. So count if there are multiple counts. Remember, this is non-delegable. So basically work with lists that are um, 2,000 rows or below. Now, if you're developing an app, for example, here we have this application. Here we have our active tasks, which are 13. This is a different list than the tasks here of 121 that are completed. Those are in an archive list. And so what I've done to get around that 2,000 limit about once a year or so, I can take and and take all of my active tasks and turn them into, actually, I only go back six months. So anything over six months, I strip out of the active archive and then I put here within um, these archive tasks. So I know I'm, I'm sorry, I'm fumbling on my words here. These are two different galleries. So if we were to look at these galleries up close here you can see that this gallery right here is PM archive one right there PM archive one and then if you look at the second one it is PM um, priority tasks archive so those are the galleries themselves and if you look into the galleries they look exactly the same because they are so just once a um, year or so I take a copy of this and I have a tutorial on how to do this and then I just create these little ones now these obviously 652 so let's just say we search here for cola we can easily find information within our um, task uh, gallery within that gallery itself this one happens to be PM archive task so let's just say we search for Amnet for example so Amnet we have in both uh, uh, PM Task Archive 1 and then Priority Task Archive list. So we have it in two different lists and it just shows up and then I can I can go ahead and take a look at that and things like that. So so that's kind of how that works. So let's um, let's go back to what we're talking about here. All right. So so that's why we're using. Um, the count if we're kind of getting around that 2000 honestly if you're doing 2000 rows you need to go to a different data set a, a list is not the best place it's just not going to perform the way you need it to so anyways but for us that are stuck at and these videos are really focused on people who just use SharePoint because that's all they have available to them and Power Apps at its basic. Notice we could be doing this dashboard easily within Power BI, but you may not have access to Power BI because it's an additional license. But most people have access to the basic, which is Power Apps SharePoint. So that's why everything's done in that manner. So, okay. So Priority Task, got it. That's the name of the list itself. Gantt Switch is a column within the list now this one we happen to have set at um at not equal to no you could say equal to yes and gantt switch is a column but it's a single uh text field it's a just a text entry we could use a uh complex field 
for yes, no, for example, which is available in SharePoint. But I would advise for those of you, I'm trying to keep this as simple as humanly possible. Just using a simple text field and typing in no is not that big of a deal compared to hitting a drop down. In fact, I think it's faster just to type in the word and it keeps it a lot um, more simple, simpler. I guess is the better way to say that. Okay. And so we're saying that and, right, we're just using the ampersigns there. So here, what are we doing with E, F, G, H, and I? So what we're saying is we're, we want to look back 14 days. So for this one, we're looking right here, created in the past 14 days, right here. Okay. So in the past 14 days, we've created... Uh, what tasks have been created. So that's 14 days in the past, in the past, from today. This variable right here, var end date, is actually right here in our app screen. Okay, and if we just do, we click in there once and go there, we can uh, type in control F var and, let me see here, var, right there, var end date. And it's just today is the code. So um, why I call it var end date, I have no idea. But uh, that's what I call it. So basically what we're saying is created. Now when we look at created, let's take a look at that real quick. Priority tasks. If we look at the data itself, you'll see these are fields that I've created, right? But columns that I've created. But there is a inherit field right here called created. And that is within every list. And that's what we're keying in on. Another one that we're going to key in on that I'll explain to you is right here, modified. So you don't have to add these to your list. They're already there. And you can key in on them in this example, created with a var end date, right? Of, so basically we're saying created. When was it created? What was the date it was created? And today, compare those for the 14 days. Okay, and we're going to illustrate that H here in day variable. Then we're going to say, so that's one end of the spectrum, right? So go back 14 days, and then we're doing the same thing, same information, except we change this to a zero. And the reason why we change that to a zero is because we want it from today. We want nothing in the future, okay? This is in the past. This is in the future, we want zero days in the future. Now, we could, if we wanted to, we could put a 14 here and we could say, okay, from today's date, I want to go back 14, which is right here, or I want to go forward for and, and, this is an and, I want to go forward 14. Okay, I could do that. I'm not. I'm just doing 14 and zero. And that's really all there is to this count. Again, this is the switch saying, no, I don't want to show, you know, for example, here on my time list, I don't want to see uh, update your time card on here, for example. I, won't, I only want to see relevant tasks to that Gantt chart because what I want to do is I want to take this Gantt chart, I want to go all and just do a screen capture or in Power Apps, you can do the same thing, a screen capture basically. And then I can just pop this right into a dashboard somewhere so that, you know, a PowerPoint presentation, for example. So very, very simple to use. Now I wanted to go over one last thing. So let's finish this and then I'll go into the last topic. So here, again, you can buy this book with all of these in it or, uh, and it's just a couple bucks, but, or you can just do screenshots. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. So I'm just going to go through this slowly that allow you to do a screenshot here. So go ahead and screenshot this. This is kind of the money slide right here, right? Gives you all the code. And then here are the explanations. So do a screenshot there. And then go ahead and do a screenshot of that one right there, basically M and N. Okay. And then that should give you all the information you need. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show was this dashboard. So we have multiple variants of this. We used, for our example, the created F right here, F and K. We did it on created, but let's say we're doing overdue here. So all we do is just change that task due date. If I were to click on my list here, I'd see a field in there called task due date. So I'm just comparing task due date and task due date. 
I'm, I'm doing this back 30 days. Again, I'm going from today and I'm doing no days in the future, only 30 days in the past. I can change this if I want pretty easily. So I'm doing it based on a, a column, an actual column inside of this list. Here, if I want to do modified, notice also that these are labels. Box three, where is it? There it is right there. Box three count. Notice the text and then the image box behind it. And then I put it in a group. But here again, I'm keying in on modified. So modified, I'm going 14 days in the past and zero days in the future. And I'm doing the same formula for that. Okay, now this one's a little different because I'm just counting the rows that are available in there. Now you can ask yourself, three plus seven is 10 plus two is 12. So why do I show 13? Remember that we are using this Gantt switch equals to no, and there's a personal task in there that we're not showing. Okay, so this shows all tasks, not just the tasks being worked within this project. And then this guy here is the same. We're doing the same basically with the date difference. We're going back 365 days, but we're looking at a different list. This one happens to be priority tasks archive. Again, separating out those lists so that you can increase your performance. So that's about it on this uh, section here. Again, please uh, take a look at this. Do your screenshots if you need to. Also, this video is if you just do a Google search or internet search for Lush plus square bracket, and I'm going to put in a number here in just a moment. Uh, you'll see it in the book when it comes out. Then you'll be able to uh, search for this video anytime. So thanks. Good luck.